Thank you all for coming here today uh, to our signing day press conference. At, I guess it was maybe four weeks ago. Uh, we sat here um, being introduced as a head football coach at the University of Miami. We talked about that day of, of understanding our issues and uh, attacking our issues, which, as we mentioned that time, sort of started with staff um, and getting a staff that I'm super excited and super proud of together to come down here to Miami. And then once that staff was in place, our attention turned um, full hard to getting into recruiting. And I got to give a lot of credit to our staff who um, really came together, uh, the guys that were here, the guys working in our recruiting office, uh, everybody in this building. Um, we, had to, we had to hit the ground running. We had to, we had to have, make quick evaluations in some standpoints and, uh, and find a way to um, make the best out of what we had uh, during this January time period. And I think we've done that. Um, I think we have addressed our issues and I think we've improved our football team at every position in the locker room. Uh, I, I want to start with a little bit of breaking news that I get a chance to break every now and then. This is not just from sources inside the program. This is actually a, a real story, but not on your sheet. Um, I'd also like to announce one additional signing. Trayvon Hill, a defensive end from Virginia Tech, will be, uh, has signed today with the University of Miami, will join our football team uh, after his graduation from Virginia Tech. Um, just a little bit about Trayvon. Trayvon's a guy with double-digit sacks in his career, um, 20 tackle for loss in his career, highly productive football player. Um, and again, we think as we have with all of our guys that have come in in a situation similar to his that can provide us great experience, um, help our depth at the defensive end position, and we think he's a big time get uh, for, for our defense. So that is an ad, and we'll get to the, the information about him here shortly. Um, I want to go a little bit uh, down the line of all the guys that, that signed in today and kind of give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of background on all those guys before I open, open it up for questions. And I want to start, um, start with our, our yesterday signing. Signing day got off to an early start uh, in Australian time, uh, Lewis Headley. And again, we talk about addressing issues of our football team. We understand field position, which was something that was a major um, a weakness for us a year ago. So to be able to sign a punter um, who we think the talent that we believe that Lewis has uh, is a big boost to our football team. Um, and, and a guy that can come in and have a chance to uh, provide great competition at uh, uh, the punter position, have a chance to uh, really make an impact on our football team, make us better um, in that special teams phase. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Jared Harrison Hunt, we got his uh, letter in today. You know, it's, it's, you know every coach is going to be proud of, of who they've signed. Um, but if there, is a, if there is a more athletic pair of defensive, if there's a more athletic, I should say, group, of defensive tackles signed by anybody in the country, uh, I'd be afraid to see it. Uh, we, uh, as a coaching staff, obviously Jess Simpson did an unbelievable job of, um, of really, really signing some quality defensive linemen, but Jared uh, plays, plays football and basketball at Christ the King, and if you know anything about New York City basketball, that is a big, big time program, and you went and watched this guy play basketball, and you're talking about a defensive tackle, a guy that's you know, gonna be a three technique, and he is breaking the press all by himself, dribbling the ball behind his back through his legs, uh, switching hands as he, as he lays the ball in. This is a very, very athletic uh, football player. And if you think about what we are uh, defensively and, and the way we choose to operate as a, as a defensive staff, uh, or as a defensive scheme, defensive structure, he fits right in. So, so a, a, great, a great pickup for us there. Um, at quarterback, Peyton Matocha, Matoka, Matoka, I'm sorry. Um, a quarterback that Dan Enos did a great job of coming in and making a quick evaluation on. This is uh, Peyton was a, a player who um, his junior season was basically cut in half uh, by Hurricane Harvey. Uh, his family was affected greatly by, by that uh, tragedy in Houston. Uh, so that kind of helped him, or not helped him, you can, that sort of kept him under the radar, let's just say, from a recruiting standpoint. But a guy that came out and was absolutely dominant his senior year, he's a high jumper. Um, comes from a very athletic family, a guy that, that when you start looking for the intangibles of, of the way we want to build our quarterback room, uh, you know, a, a gym rat, smart, tough, uh, loves ball, wants to think the game out, and, and a guy that we, we thought would really help us sort of reshape the, uh, the quarterback room here at, at Miami, okay? Uh, let's see, we're talking about Christian Williams. Christian Williams is a corner uh, from Daphne, Alabama. Um, Got to give the credit to, to Mike Rump, did an amazing job finishing on, on Christian. Um, we, we, we think Christian has unlimited potential in terms of the way that he can uh, factor into our defense. Obviously, everyone knows we lost 
two out of our top three corners from this past year. Um, Christian is a highly competitive guy. He's got great length, uh, great ability to play the ball in the air. Um, great young man, very, very, very intelligent football player. Uh, and again, just a very highly competitive kid who we felt like uh, fitness culture, his family had a great visit down here. And we, th we think that he's got a great future in our secondary and really drawn um, by, the, by understanding the chance of what we do in the back end and how that really fits him as a football player. Staying in the secondary, uh, Bubba Bolden. Uh, Bubba Bolden is, is a safety who started his career at UCLA. Uh, will be joining us um, again. A guy that's um, you know played a lot of big time ball. Had had a had a, a very big role there. He's got off the charts athleticism. Um, everyone may know he was he's a teammate, of course, of, of Tate Martell and uh, Brevin Jordan. And 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 to get, again, Bubba was one of those guys very early on that kind of jumped in the boat and sort of helped us get our momentum going. When we talk about you know, what we want to try to accomplish in recruiting in the new Miami. Bubba gets a lot of credit for, for seeing something in us and, and really deciding that, that Miami would be the place that he would, um, that he could finish his career and, and, and find great success. Uh, Chigoze in, in Norica, in Norica, I'm going to pronounce that wrong. I knew I would. I apologize for that. Uh, Chigoze is going to be a, a grad transfer defensive tackle coming in from UCLA. Uh, Chigoze is what time, time happens when there is a coaching change. Um, at times, a new coach comes in and, and people want a different style of play and uh, went from being a very highly productive player his, his sophomore year to, to not as much as his junior year. But all you do is put on his tape and you can see, again, if you think about what we've established as our, our defensive tackle play at the University of Miami, disruptive guys in the backfield, guys wreaking havoc. Um, obviously, a lot of things that left with, with uh, Tito Oden uh, Odenimbo and, and Gerald Willis walking out the door. Um, when you look at the defensive tackle class that we've brought in, in terms of Jared, Chigoze, and um, not to mention uh, Blissett and Jalar Holly, that, that, is, that is an outstanding haul for the defensive tackle play. And we've talked about this for, you know, for the last three years, to be dominant in the 4-3 defense, it starts with those two guys. So I, again, I, I think we're, we're extremely proud of, of how we've improved our football team at the defensive line position. And I believe I have covered everybody who has sent in today, and at that point, I'd love to open up for questions. We have the ability to continue to improve our football team. Um, there are some targets that we're still working through, uh, and there's also the understanding that there will probably be, be more um, coming up through the, the remainder of the spring semester. So, yes, we've, we've got some flexibility to continue to find a way to build the best 2019 football team we can. Is the offensive line maybe an area that you're still looking at in particular just because it doesn't seem like you have a whole lot of experience coming back? You know? it, it's, it's, it's like how you, would, you, would, you have to factor it in as a situation of best available versus team needs. You know? So I think, I think we'll look for whatever we can find and find the best available guy and find out how it fits what we need. Well, I mean, obviously, you're recruiting on both sides of the ball now, right? And, um, and you know, you, you have a different role. You can't be in the schools as often, um, stuff like that. But, I mean, recruiting is still relationships. Um, that's why the, 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 the greatest thing we did this month is build a great staff, a great staff of guys that have worked and been, you know, waking up early and going to bed late and sleeping in hotels and connecting into all kinds of, you know, strange places across the United States to get this class across the line. So, um, you know, again, I'm the one that stands up here and, and you know, and kind of goes over everything. But the, a lot of the credit really goes to the guys on the staff. Did you make the decision immediately that uh, to boost this roster, you know, not only were going to have to get what's left in recruiting, uh, high school games, but you were going to transfer to be such a major – There's, there's, okay, to start with, we did not sit down and say, okay, let's go hunt, you know, these guys coming from other schools. Um, what you have to do is you have to, like, like everything in our program, we have to address our issues, okay? We have to fix our roster. All right, now, what's the best way to fix our roster? Okay, you get into January, you know you got a certain amount of scholarships left, okay? Who's out there, who's the best guy available? The best guy available simply comes down to 
What is the position? What, what does he play? And what is our need at that position? Every time we brought in a transfer, and this is going back to Adrian Colbert and Dee Delaney and um, uh, like I mentioned Tito a year ago, just speaking on the defense side of the ball, it's been where we've had to create age in the room because we did not have any age in that room. We felt like we had to create some competition in that room just to kind of get it going, okay? Or we tried to create some depth, you know? Uh, I, 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 I don't know what it had been like to go through a football season a year ago without Tito. And I know we would not have made it at corner in 16 and 17 without Adrian and without D. Okay, so you, you assess your football team, all right, and our job as a, as a staff is we, we, have to, we have to fix our issues. We have to address our team. Now, the hidden part of all this is that we have like seven seniors on our football team returning, seven total seniors. So if we had not, all right, let's say we had gone out and signed all high school kids, which again, that wasn't by design that we didn't, all right, but if we designed, if I'd come up here today and said all of our guys are all, you know, could be here for the next four years, we'd go out next year with like an 11 man recruiting class, a 10 man recruiting class. Okay, because our roster balance, okay, would be out of whack. All right, so, a, so if you have a room where you've got your bottom heavy with freshmen, your bottom heavy with sophomores, being able to add a guy, an older guy in that room, okay, what does that older guy do? Number one, he can set the tone in practice. He understands how to lift weights. He understands how to go through an off-season workout, okay? The younger guys finally get a chance to, to – Adrian Colbert taught our younger guys how to be a guy, right? Michael Jackson was a hell of a player the past two years. Michael Jackson benefited – from Adrian Colbert in 2016, okay? Our defensive tackles on campus right now, like Jade and Jordan Miller, will have benefited from having Tito a year ago. They saw a guy come in with that sense of urgency of knowing, hey, this is my last go around. I've got to attack every day with that sense of urgency. So looking at the, at the positions we had in our team, then who's available? Then can they help us as a player? But then most importantly, do they fit with us? Okay, are they one of our guys? Okay, are these people that are leaving a school potentially for a reason that might make sense, right? Because every, every case is different. So it's very unfair to say, well, as a, as a wide sweeping plan, we're gonna go down this road, okay? We have to fix this position. What's the best guy available, okay? And there, was, and there, were, there were all kinds of guys coming from all kinds of places that we said no to, okay? For some reason or another, we did not feel like it was a fit. So a lot went into that. Going forward, we don't think we've mortgaged the 20 or 21 or 22 football teams um, by doing what we've done here. In fact, we've, we almost feel like we've helped it because it'll help balance our numbers so now all of our recruiting classes will make sense from time to come. Man, the first chance we've had to stop you since Jeff Thomas was reinstated. Just your thinking with that, and I, I don't like the term short leash, but is there an understanding that there can't be any more missteps? Jeff is like a new signing in a way, right? Because obviously we missed him um, towards the end of last season. Uh, Jeff and I had a, had a, you know, we had a talk and I just felt like at least I wanted to explain to him, you know, what it was going to be like down here um, and how the program was going to be run and how the, the culture might be different and how the discipline structure was going to operate. Um, I think it's unfair to say, you know, things like short leash and things like that because in a way what we told everybody on the football team when they sat here in our first team meeting was everything is new again, okay? And everybody has a clean slate. And what you've done in the past, what you've done good, is irrelevant, what you've done poorly is irrelevant. Um, so as we laid out our plan and kind of how, you know, hey, if you do this wrong, this is your, your you know, the, basically the, the punishment you have to pay. And if you do this right, then this is what happens. And, and, and it's going to be a program based off incentive. The guys who do right are going to really enjoy being around here. And the guys who don't do right will not be enjoy being around here. And, and I, think, I think Jeff was, um, you know, I, I, I think he enjoyed that approach. Um, I don't know if he really ever wanted to leave in the first place. Obviously, he's got a lot of really good feelings, and, and he knows that this is a very important year for him. So, uh, so I, think, I think he provides a massive shot in the arm uh, for offense. And, and uh, in that trans tra transitional time, David Cooney's a guy that deserves a lot of credit uh, for helping talk to Jeff and, and convince him that that return to Miami was in his best interest. Yeah. What, what do you think about the eligibility of Tate Martell going into this year? Really early in that process. Really early in that process. Things have just kind of been um, – Still paperwork kind of being gathered, things like that. So we're not we're not anxious on a timetable or anything like that. But um, but we're, we're I do want to mention Tate and KJ because we they we didn't sort of talk about them in December and, and you know they they didn't they're here right so they didn't sign today. Um, but obviously uh, talking about Tate, just Tate the person again. Tate is a person that if he was if he was standing in this room within within 15 minutes there'd be 15 people standing around him. He's just got that personality that people gravitate to. Uh, he's a natural leader of men. 
Um, he, he's a guy that when he was in seventh grade, drew up his own playbook. I mean, he just, he just loves ball. He loves, he loves playing the position of quarterback. Um, obviously has some really, really uh, impressive physical abilities. Um, but more than anything, he's a guy that wants to come in and just compete for our quarterback position. And he, he understood um, our situation on this roster and, all, and, and then to, to be able to work with Dan Enos and, and, and get coached by a guy that's, you know, got an amazing track record for developing quarterbacks. I think tr uh, Tate is just, it was just a great fit between us and him. And the fact we've got a couple other Bishop Gorman guys here, you know, helps him feel at home. And then, and then KJ, uh, real quick, Susan, KJ Osborne, uh, who came in from Buffalo, has already, everything I'm talking, I'm talking about, KJ puts it real. Because KJ has already established with his work ethic and toughness since he's been on our campus um, in the past month, uh, just off the charts competitive. So we had our first off season program uh, in here this morning as a coaching staff. And KJ is just a guy that just sets the tone. So it's very hard to be a young receiver at Miami and not want to follow his lead. So um, I told a guy like KJ, I said, I said, well, there's a lot that we can offer you, you know, in terms of coming here to Miami and being able to play in a major conference and compete for major things. Um, but what you can give us, and forget about your talent and touchdown catches and things like that, you can help reshape our wide receiver room and, and be that older guy that we kind of missed out on that can really, again, how do we practice? How do we run a drill? How do we do anything like that? Yes, Susan. Uh, Bolden, his eligibility, can he play immediately? That's the plan. That's the plan. That's still, still working through that, but we're, we're, we are planning on that. Is he in a junior college or something now? Or a... That's correct, yes. There, yeah, there, there's, there's different sort of hurdles he's got to jump over, but we're aware of all that and there's a plan in place. The other thing I want to ask you, like Barry was asking about Jeff Thomas, it's, and, I, and you're saying everybody starts with a clean slate. I know that, like, uh, I guess, Bolden and Trevon Hill have had some issues at their schools. Um, is that the same way with them as far as you're concerned? I don't know if they're we, considered risks. Right. As, as, as a football staff, we would never bring anyone here who we didn't vet out. And, and from our standpoint, we didn't feel like we'd have a great chance for success at the University of Miami because, because again, we think we have a really good culture here and we wouldn't want, to, we as a, as a staff would not want to introduce anyone to our culture that we think would be cause any type of disruption in any type of way. So, I want When it comes to recruiting rankings and all of that, at this point, do you think a new head coach even care because maybe your best recruiting job was your new staff in particular getting Dan Enos away from a school like Alabama? Here's, here's what, when, when, when we walked out of this room on January 2nd, and you gotta, you gotta assess your issues, and then you gotta fix them, okay? And are all of our problems solved by today? They're not, but all of our issues have been addressed, which to me, that's, that's, that's what it's all about, right? You understand where your weaknesses are, and you, and you, you, you try to fix your weaknesses the best you can. Um, so it's, it, it, you can't really do this and have an eye on, on recruiting rankings. Um, they're, we will certainly, after this, look at everything we've done in terms of recruiting and, and the best ways to do that going forward. But I don't know, this class is so bizarre, right? Because you have all these transfers and those guys don't fit in the recruiting rankings. And, you know, I don't really know how to, I'm not going to sit here and try and, and beat our chest and say, hey, you know, you know, our class should be ranked here or our class, because to be honest, when, when we kick off in August, nobody will care. It, it really doesn't matter. So we just, we, we like what we have. Again, compared to where we were as a football team, kind of limping off the field at Yankee Stadium. I know this, we're a much better football team today than we were in December in, in, Manhattan, in, in the Bronx. So um, that's our main thing. Now we've got to get these guys on campus and get them developed. And to that point also, one thing since the last time we've been around, I also want to mention Dave Feely, our head strength and conditioning coach. Now three weeks being with our players has done more. That's, that is the story of this program right now, the way he has changed the culture of our football team. I mentioned we had a indoor work, uh, our first workout today in the indoor facility. It was, it was a good workout. It was kind of a sort of an appetizer for what it's going to be when they come back here next week. Um, the workout's over. Ten minutes out of the workout, there's still 40 guys in the indoor. Just out there just doing extra work. Um, Saturdays, we, we, you know, we work out four days a week right now in the month of Jan in, we, in January. Saturdays, they, get, they have a chance, chance to come in. It's optional. It's not a lift. They can just come and stretch or, you know, foam roll or things like that. I think the first Saturday, I think we had like 44 guys in, 45, four guys in, something like that, somewhere in that mid-40s number. I think the second week it went up to 53. This past week it went up to 65. 
Right, so, so we wanted to create a culture where guys wanted to walk into this building. Guys wanted to be in this building. Um, and these are real tangible things to let us know that this football program is, is going through some real transformations. It, it, I know the, the Twitter stuff is fun and that can kind of look like on the surface, but really what's happening on the core and the inside, there is, there is, a, there is a transformation taking place uh, inside out, which I think is more important ultimately than anything that looks as it appears from outside in. Well, it's, it's super important. I mean, I mean we, we have to, we are the University of Miami. So we have, our recruiting will always start in the city of Miami and then push out into Broward and Palm Beach County and then the state of Miami, you know, I-4 South. Um, obviously in this class, we, we did make some um, great strides in terms of going to some out-of-state areas to help complement um, our in-state areas. But, but, all, but we know in the long term at this school, we will be judged by how we recruit um, the tri-county area and then pushing out towards the I-4 corridor. So um, not just Steven and, and guys like Eric, but we, we feel like just watching our guys in action for the first month, um, not just as an individual recruiter, but kind of the thing that, and the feedback we get from the parents is how the coaches interact with each other with at the part that can't be faked. Because you know, you don't, it's a coaching staff's like a team. You don't really know how the guys are gonna bond. Um, a lot of the way that this staff was put together, there were a lot of prior points of connection that, that was not done on accident. Um, so that that early process of kind of filling each other out would, wouldn't, wouldn't be so awkward. And, and there, there'd be more of that re reunion effect and kind of getting the band back together type deal. And, and uh, that matters because I, I, know, I know the players sense that. I know recruits sense that. And for sure the recruits' parents sense, sense that. But I heard that on more than one occasion. Uh, a mom come to me and say, this coaching staff is different than what I see at other schools, by the way. They just interact when no one's watching. You know, not, not, not the things that are performed, but just that when, you know, kind of that, that quiet moment when, they, when people are observing what you're doing. So, again, super proud of the staff that we have. Uh, I'm glad it sounded because I was running out. Um, so <laughs> I, I was learning. How, I, I learned how to Google a lot of different things because whatever came up when you Google Hurricane was was I had I'd seen all those options and there were some other ones that didn't make any sense too. You know the, the guy the guy hanging on the pole with his legs up in the air. Um, but uh, no, you know it's it's um, I don't know. You know every every time I tweet something, I'm tweeting it to a a 17 year old. I'm I'm tweeting it to 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 someone that's in high school. To me, that's who we're selling our program to every day because that is the future of our program. Um, you know, again, I think we can do this job and, and act like we're having fun doing it, you know, but we, got, but we still got to eat our vegetables, you know. I mean, this program is still being based off of, you know, you know, some core things and, you know, that, that never change and always win. Um, but if you know you're doing those things right, there's no reason why we can't act like we're enjoying each other's company and, and enjoying ourselves doing it. Do you ever get any sleep? I always wonder, what time do you go to sleep in there? Just looking when I'm not tweeting. <laughs> Maybe how, how's Nikosi Perry been, and, and also the other quarterback since the season's been? Uh, the I mean, really, the only way you can evaluate the guys right now is what they're doing in the weight room and what they're doing academically. Um, so I think everybody has got a good attitude. You know, everybody's trying to do right. Um, like I said, today's the first day that our team had a chance to perform for our coaching staff. Um, and the temperature of that will get turned up to 11 on Tuesday morning. And I think on the next eight days, starting next, the next eight opportunities over the next four weeks, we'll know a lot about who we have, you know, character-wise. Um, and then at that time, we can also start, you know, introducing some ball to them in a meeting structure. And then we go away for spring break. And then, uh, and then here we go. When does spring football start exactly? Tuesday, uh, March 19th. And then we'll sort of go on our normal schedule as we've done. Like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, like you almost, almost that, that's that should be true every week. There may be an exception. And do you, like as far as I know, the spring game, or is, have you decided? We're playing the Rolling Stones for the spring game. It's a new thing. The, the Rolling Stones, <laughs> okay? They're, um, they're they're a little old and slow. We felt like we had a chance to let our speed show, you know, against them. Um, 
So, <laughs> thanks, Jen. <laughs> The Rolling Stones, I don't know where they are. They're in England, I think. So, spring game is not set yet in terms of destination, but yes, we, 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 there is, there is a, um, we will be look, looking for an alternate venue. The one thing I will tell you is this, that I can confirm today, is that in April, there will be an open scrimmage in Dade County. All right, so whether you, you know, we, we, don't, we don't know what a spring game is anyway. Well, the, the credit to finding him really goes to the previous staff um, because his commitment was really um, settled by December. In fact, I wasn't even here the weekend um, that he came in for his official visit, so I've never seen him in person. Um, the picture he tweeted out, you know, hey, I think he's a guy we should send out for the coin toss every week, you know, to the other team and, and uh, see how they feel about that, you know. But uh, I think, you know, listen, this is Miami, right? It's hard to shock somebody in Miami. Right, so like I think I think you'll fit in perfectly here, and, and we're we're really happy to have who he is on our football team. There was an Australian headline in one of the papers that called him your dad's scariest coworker. Those those damn Aussies, you know, <laughs> and their sense of humor. I don't I don't I don't want to tell you about that, you know. <laughs> so. Well, I'm going to go back to being inside out, right? So the most important thing, um, I, I know perception matters from outside in, but the most important thing was to rebrand it on the inside for the, you know, 100 and some odd men that sat in here in our first team meeting. And, and what, if you're going to say something like, like the new Miami, well, obviously everybody knows this is a honeymoon period, right? So what, how to define it? What does it mean? Um, and what, so what does it mean to our players? Because um, ultimately, if it means the right thing to them, it will look like the right thing in the fall. And that's what really matters, right? It's not really what we say we're going to do in the springtime or in the winter or whatever. It's, it's what we do when we go out there and play in the fall. Uh, so we had a, you know, again, we've, we've had some great meetings as a staff. This is a staff that's really aligned in terms of how we know to lead this program to, to championships. We sat in here with the players and we're able to really lay out exactly how they'll be, they'll be evaluated in, in every aspect of our program and exactly what our expectations will be for them. They understand our standard here at Miami is extraordinarily high. And quite simply, they'll, they'll, they will raise their level of play and, and level the way that they do everything to that standard, or ultimately they'll, be, they'll get passed up by someone else who will. And to be able to create that competition and that culture here at Miami again, uh, where the locker room polices the locker room, uh, is one of the big things that, we, that we've made this spring all about. When we get our leaders in this room right here to – to take over this football team, we're going to have a chance. And, and we're, we're in the baby stages of that right now. We're not ready to – I don't know if we'd even – I'd take the Rolling Stones and the points if they played us right now. But I think we've got a chance, if we keep doing what we're doing, to look the way we want to look come fall. Yeah, well, there's a lot of tension, right? Because, you know, you get the job, you don't see the players for two weeks. So, you know, those guys come in, and it's a little different. And, and who is this? You know, half the, the team doesn't, hasn't really been in meetings with you, and they don't really know what it's all about. And um, so just to be able to break the ice. You know, everybody coming here, it's a different room. Our, our team meeting room is, is, is out, of, out of order right now. And break the ice. And, again, it's different. Something's changed. Okay, this is not the same building you came and walked into. There's a lot of great things in this program from the last three years, and all those things are still intact. Okay? But they had to know that something, had been, that something was different. The way we were going to go about our business was going to change. So we went out there and we had our fun. And that, that kind of broke the ice, kind of broke the tension, you know what I mean, kind of got relaxed. We came in here and the part we couldn't put on Twitter, and we met, and, and you know, as a coach, you don't want to have a meeting that lasts over an hour for sure. We, we were probably in here for an hour and 20 minutes. And the kids the whole time were like this. I mean, they were on the front of their seat, I mean, looking forward and, and – highly energetic, dialed in, and, and that's where we laid it out. We laid out who, who, who are we? Uh, because when you sort of give birth to a program or give birth to a team in any year, 
you have an opportunity to really set whatever core values you want to set into who we're going to be. So it was important the second our guys walked out of this building that first night, they knew exactly who they were or what the standard of who they have to be is and whether they can live up to that or not live up to that. But uh, so, like I said, out there, we had the dessert first. We came in here and we ate the meat and potatoes, which is really ultimately that's going to be who we are. I mean, we, again, out, out from the outside in, I think it's great to present the fun and all that type of stuff. And we will have fun in this building. Um, but you don't win by having fun, right? You can't give the kid ice cream every day and expect, you know, have to have a healthy kid. So, um, you know, the real, the real work is being done right now. And, uh, and our guys, to be honest, they're, they love it. They're loving it up. Let's do two more guys. Coach, what was your top, like, number one thing that you focused on when, when talking to recruits or transfer targets? Was it the energy? Was it the new facilities? Like, can you just pinpoint like, one exact thing that potentially sways somebody to come here? I think it's University of Miami. And, and that means a lot of different things. Number one, it means the university, the school. Um, you know, people could, you know, understand what type of institution this is and what type of uh, academic prowess uh, that the school comes with. Um, now you talk about the University of Miami, you're talking about the tradition, the ability to win. I think all the recruits know, whether the high school guys or the college guys, they know that this football team is not very far away for competing for championships. Um, and it may be, maybe it just takes me. Maybe it just takes me in my position. And when you have that and they can see that we're, I think the belief is we're a lot closer to the team that was in Charlotte in December of 17, as opposed to the team that was in New York in December of 18. Um, and we're not very far away because everybody likes winning. Everybody likes winning. And then everybody likes playing. You know, so you have a chance where you can sell, hey, listen, new, you know, playing time, new staff, fresh start, new ideas, come in here, compete, and let's see what happens. So, you know, I, you know, you know, you walk in with a U on your chest, that's strong, you know, and these kids, they understand, um, they understand what that means. Anything else, guys? Thank you. Thank you all so much.